Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Batty, Senior Director with The Pampered Chef. It is March 15th, 2017, and this is Tools of the Trade. And tonight, we're going to be talking about creating culture, okay? But before we get to that, have you ever said to yourself things like, Ugh, I wish I had more people at my shows, or I wish people would arrive on time to my parties so I could start my shows on time? Or, I wish people would interact more at my parties. Or, I wish my host didn't drag their feet closing out their parties so we could get these things closed and people could get their, part, their products faster. Sonia, do you find yourself saying any of those things to yourself sometimes? I think we all do. I wish, I wish, I wish. Um, but think about it. Pampered Chef has brand recognition, right? So Sonia, since you're on the call here, what is the Pamper Chef brand? When I say Pamper Chef to you, what immediately comes to mind? What are some words that come to mind? Me cookware, actually. Cookware. Okay. So people know Pamper Chef cookware. I think high quality tools, right? People think good stuff for the kitchen. Um, some people call it Home Depot for the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Sometimes people say quick, easy meals. Now, these are the things that come to mind when you hear Pampered Chef because there's brand recognition there, right? But along with Pampered Chef having a brand, each one of us has a brand as well. And did you guys know that Pamp the Pampered Chef brand has changed over time? I've been with Pampered Chef for 20 years, okay? We used to be known for crescent rolls and cream cheese. Really fattening recipes that could be made quick and easy. All right. But those days are gone. Have you ever have you found any recipes lately that, are, that use cream cheese and crescent rolls? No. Why? Because we're responding to the needs and the desires of our customers. So we all signed up as customers, as consultants, and we get the benefit of working under this amazing Pampered Chef brand. But guess what? Like I said, we also all have our own personal brand. And if you haven't thought about your brand, you're probably creating it without even knowing it. And it might be working well for you, but then again, it might not be working too well for you. But just as Pampered Chef has sort of recreated and reinvented their brand over the years, we can too. And your brand is like your culture, okay? And there are three steps in creating a culture. Okay, I took a class on this. It had nothing to do with Pampered Chef. One is know it, and the next is teach it, and the third is live it. And this comes from Judy Joel at the home office, okay? So first you have to know your culture, then you have to teach your culture, and then you have to live your culture. So know your culture. All right, so a minute ago, Sonia, I asked you what words come to mind when you hear Pampered Chef, like what is the Pampered Chef brand or the Pampered Chef culture? But now I want you guys to think about what words you would love your customers to come up with if I were to walk up to them and tell them your name and say what comes to mind what words so think about your culture what are some of the words that you want to define your culture you guys grab a piece of paper and just start writing some words down some things that you want to define the culture of your pampered chef business and again if I went up to your host or your customer and said what is this person, what comes to mind when I say this person's name? What do you hope they would say? Anybody wanna share a word or two that they've jotted down? Yeah, uh, I would, it's John Pease. Hi, John. Hi, I joined a little late, I'm sorry. That's okay. What have uh, you got on your list? Okay, on my list, I have uh, honest, truthful, yeah, reliable, reliable, and caring. Awesome, love it. And I bet you're already living up to that. Great. <laughs> Sonia, what have you got on your list? 
I have um, caring, friendly, honest, fun. Good. I have fun too, and I have honest on my list too. Okay, so I put, um, oh, where is it? Fun, honest, interactive, uplifting, low pressure, informative, prompt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay. I had more time to think about it than I kind of just threw this at you guys. But what I encourage you to do is let this list evolve over the next couple of days. Think about what you want the culture of your business to look like and write those words down, right? Because if you don't know what you want your culture to be, you can't go about creating it, right? Hi, Patricia. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. We're talking about creating a culture for your business. Okay. So once you've decided what your culture wants, what you want your culture to be, that's know it. The next step is teach it. Okay. So for instance, I'm going to take um, on an interactive. I'm going to use that as an example. That's part of the, the words that I have on my list. Well, how do we teach it? Well, in the pampered chef world, um, that means host coaching. Okay. So how do we teach that? Well, when I'm talking to my hosts, I always tell them we are going to have so much fun together. I'm going to be partnering with you to make sure that this is a lot of fun for you and your friends. So I'm planting that seed and I tell them you need to invite tons and tons of people because probably only a third of them are going to walk through the door. And you know what? The more the merrier. And I always make sure to tell my hosts, if your friends are broke, tell them they need to come. Because buying is not required, only having fun is required. Okay, so they know that this is, this is going to be fun. Um, so I also let them know that I start my parties on time. I, I let them know that, you know, people usually have to get up and either get up with kids or go to work in the morning or both. And so we want to honor the time of the people there. But we're going to have so much fun. If people arrive late, it's okay. I will give them five points for being late and they can join the fun and we don't eat till the end. Okay. So during the host coaching, I'm planting seeds for fun and interactive. Okay. okay. So that's teaching it. Okay. Because we have to know it. We have to teach it. And then we have to live it. So how do I live fun and interactive? Okay. Um, as soon as I get to my party, um, I'm deciding where we're going to do the demo. And usually it's around a kitchen table or an island. And when I'm setting up, I set up around the perimeter of the table. I do a gather round style. We all sort of gather around and cook together. So I take all my flexible cutting mats, I put them around the perimeter of the table with, with products and the ingredient right next to it. I pull the chairs away so there's no sitting down at the table. Um, I make the party interactive right from the start. From the time the first person walks in, I'll say, hey, Sonia. Welcome, you're the first one here. You get 20 points for being first. And Sonia's like, oh, wow. She doesn't even know what the 20 points mean yet, but she's excited. And then I introduce myself and I give her a name tag because I think it's more fun when people can call each other by name, especially me, because I'm really bad with names. And then I will say, hey, Sonia, do you want 20 more points? And usually Sonia says, sure. And I'll say, you're going to be the name tag lady. Every time someone comes in, just greet them with a smile, introduce yourself, find out what their name is and make them a name tag. So then the next person walks in and it's John. And I say, hey, John, welcome. You're early. Ten points for you. John's like, all right. John doesn't even know what the point's for, but who doesn't want points? And now Sonia uh, makes him a name tag. And, and if she knows him, she'll probably say something like, I got 20 for being first. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm getting 20 more for writing out these name tags. I see your like, favorite, hey, John, <laughs> hey, John, do you want a job so you can get, so you can catch up? And what do you say? Of course. <laughs> of course. You want to get behind in the points. So I'm going to say to you, all right, John, you're going to make sure everybody gets a catalog. Okay. And I hand him all the catalogs with the order forms tucked in the front. And now in walks Patricia. <laughs> Patricia is greeted by Sonia, who makes her a name tag. John walks up to her and hands her a catalog. And Patricia's looking around, and I just walk up and I say, Hi, Patricia, how are you? I'm good. Great. Now, of course, I don't know her name, or I know her name because Sonia's given her a name tag, but I introduce myself and I say, Hi, I'm Karen. 
I don't even say I'm the Pampered Chef Consultant. And I have the same sticky name tag on me that everybody else has. I don't have like a fancy professional one. Um, and I don't have my apron on. And I just mind ask Patricia, so how do you know the host? Make up an answer. I met her in high school. Oh, wow. So you guys grew up together. Was that around yeah. here? Where was that? Weston. Oh, Weston. Okay. So you've been local your whole life. Wow. Good for you. Well, welcome. You know what? We're going to be um, cooking together tonight. We're going to be lots of fun. So, um, but you're a little behind in the points. Would you like a job? Sure. Okay. You are going to be in charge of the wine. Okay. I'm going to show you how to use our wine bottle opener and you're going to make sure everybody who wants one gets a, gets a glass of wine. Okay. And if they run oh. out, you've got to open the next jar. All right. I was, it's kind of like medical school. You watch one, you do one. You do one. <laughs> Only, only it's wine, so it's way safer. Nobody's life is in your hands. So absolutely. So, so I just put people to work, and I also tell them we're going to be cooking. So um, give your hands a quick wash, so there isn't a bottleneck at, at the um, at the sink when it comes time to cooking. Mm -hmm. cooking. So this is from the time people are walking into the party. Um, so as a culture, do we invite strangers into our homes? No. No. So you want to become not a stranger as quickly as possible. I love to ask how you know the host. If they work together, oh, what is it you do? Oh, that sounds like fun. Or if they say, oh, our kids grew up together. Oh, how many kids do you have? You know, I just ask really, you know, some mundane sort of questions that nobody feels uncomfortable answering and just chat with them for a few minutes. Tell them to give their hands a wash, give them some kind of job to do and um, let them know we're going to be cooking together. And then at the beginning of the party, when I say, okay, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. And I tell my story and I thank the host. I tell them how the party's going to go. I say, here's how it's going to work today. We're going to be all gathered around. We're going to make this really fun recipe together. And it's quick and it's easy because it's pampered chef. So it's probably only going to take about 15 minutes. And then when the recipe goes in the microwave or the oven, we're going to sit down. I'm going to tell you about some specials that we've got going on. And then when the recipe comes out, you can eat, shop, gab, and catch up with your friends. So now I've planted the seed about how this is gonna go. Okay, because if you want to create culture, you have to be in the driver's seat of your business, right? You have yeah. to be the one creating the culture. So you decide what it's gonna be and then you let them know, here's how it's gonna go. And so I don't have people going, what, we have to cook? I mean, because it's interactive right from the get-go. If I do have someone who says, oh, I don't wanna cook, I go, okay, you pour the wine. Or you be the recipe reader. We've got jobs for everybody. Um, you could be the microwave manager. I mean, just make up a name for stuff, make it fun, keep it really interactive. And I find if people know that the, the cooking part is only 15 to 20 minutes, then they're not having side conversations with their friends because they know there's going to be time for those side conversations when they're eating and shopping at the end of the night. Okay. So that's how you decide what your culture is going to be. So you know it, then you teach it through your host coaching, and then you live it at your homes. Okay, I'll give you another example, and then I'll have you guys throw me out something that you want to sort of flesh out as far as teach it and know it or live it. Um, another one is starting shows on time. I like to be prompt because um, if it's a 6.30 show and we don't start cooking until 7 o'clock, you're going to get a booking or two from that party maybe, and then those people are going to send out invitations, and, and they're going to invite some of the same coworkers who were at the first party. And so you send out the invitation, it says 6.30. What time do you think those people are going to be showing up? 7. 7. <laughs> but if they're running late, then after. Now it's like 7.15 by the time everybody's rolling in, 45 minutes after. So you want to start your shows on time. Respect the time of the people who are there. And the other thing is if your party goes late and people don't get out of, of, of the place till late, they don't want to have a party because they think, oh, i got to get up in the morning. I don't have time for this. So, um, so you want to start your parties on time. So that's part of my culture is I like to be prompt and I like to honor people's schedules. So how do I do that? I let my host know during host coaching. By the way, we're going to start the party pretty much on time. Okay, some people do a, um, a, an on-time door prize. One of my directors, if the party starts at 6.30, at 6.30, everybody who's at the party throws their name in a hat. She picks out a prize, hands in the season's best, and then starts the party. Does her intros, thanks the host, and goes on from there.
So if someone's five minutes late and they come in and they're like, oh, you know, you're just raffling off a prize and they go, what was that? And somebody says, oh, it's just a prize. She just raffled off, but you weren't here. <laughs> Darn. Well, now they want to be there. But also if you're promoting your live shows on Facebook, you could say, by the way, doing an on-time prize, make sure you're there right at 630 to get your name in the drawing. Okay. So do you see how you can create the culture? So you teach it by posting on Facebook so people know, by prepping the host, by um, telling the host, by the way, do your last minute reminders and tell everybody, remind everybody we're doing the drawing right at 6.30 or right at the start time. And then you live it by doing it. You do the drawing and you start the party. You create the culture. Now I gotta tell you, the first time or two that I did this, most of my crowd was late because I had already created the other kind of culture that I didn't want. I'd sort of let it happen. I wasn't consciously trying to develop that culture, but it, it just sort of happened. Yeah. So I had to have a couple of parties before people were like, ah, they were catching on. Now they're all, they're all early because they want early points. And they, come, <laughs> and they come wearing tons of jewelry because I give points for wearing jewelry at the end of the night. <laughs> Crazy. It's just for fun. But... Um, so that's how you, you know, create the culture for being on time. You, that's how you teach it and live it. So I want to hear from you guys. What is a word that, that, you, that you now, um, for the know it, the teach it, and the live it? It's on your know it sheet. Like, I know I want this part of my culture, but it's not right now part of my culture. So how do I teach it and live it? Anybody got something on their list? Getting over the nerves of standing in front of people because I haven't done it for a long time. Oh, oh! So you you want confidence? Yeah. <laughs> as part of your culture. Yes. Okay, then I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Just get up there and do it. Okay. There is no way to, uh, you know, you can um, actually say affirmations. I uh -huh. thoroughly, thoroughly believe in affirmations. This is kind of a sidetrack, but um, I do reading from time to time on the side. And uh, in the American culture, the average adult um, gives, gives themselves 50,000 negative thoughts a day. I believe that. It's true. When you think about it, oh, I don't feel like getting up. I'm too tired. Oh, I feel fat in these jeans. You know, whatever it is, we just give each other, we just give ourselves, it's just negative, 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 negative. And you know what? The brain doesn't know the difference between truth and lying. It only knows what we tell it. And if you don't think that's true, think about when you watch a movie. You know it's not true, but if it's sad, do you cry? Do you feel sad? When it's yeah. shocking, you know, when it scares you, do you, do you <laughs> And yet you know it's not true. But your brain, in that moment where you kind of forget that this isn't true, it reacts as if it is true. Yeah. So guess what? Your brain doesn't know. You are creating your own reality. Only thing is, we've been creating it for so long, we think it comes from outside yeah. of us, but really mostly it comes from our internal dialogue. <laughs> so it is important to have affirmations, to read them out loud with a smile every day, multiple, day, multiple times a day. So you want to you wanna write some things down on your affirmation list, like I am a confident Pamper Chef consultant. And then you get up and you read that in the morning and you read it in the afternoon and you read it at night. And on the way to your show, you say it out loud too. Um, okay. And then you just keep doing shows. And you know what? You do it scared. Okay. I'll just let you guys know, Patricia just had her first, her first party. It was a kickoff party. She did it solo and it was $1,108 in sales and five bookings. Yay, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. That is rock star status. I wish I had that at most of my parties. So, hey, if that's what you do when you're scared, just stay scared. <laughs> it's working for you. Okay. Um, anything else when you think of okay, I know this, I want this to be part of my culture, but I can't quite figure out how to teach you to live it? Uh, well, there was one that I learned through my launch party with uh, Lisa Lloyd. Mm -hmm. um, she actually had them get up and actually use the utensils. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, oh, uh, yeah. and some awesome. of the people were like, oh, wow. You know, the one woman, I sold a knife to her, a, a, a good knife. And she's like, wow. She goes, oh, I have little hands. And it was that, I forgot which knife it is, but uh, that I got in my kit, but she loved it. 
Yes, absolutely. And like I said, um, I do the gather round style. I don't do any of the cooking at my shows, none. Um, and in fact, when they gather around the island or the table, I step back so that I, there's a person in front of me between me and the table when they're all gathered around. And let me ask you something. When everybody's standing around an island or a table together, where's the front of the room? There isn't one. There isn't one. No. And I've got one person is being the recipe reader. I just look over and I say, hey, recipe reader, what are we doing first? That person reads the recipe. While they're reading it, everybody's looking at them. And then whatever the step of the recipe is, I, I look and say, oh, they need garlic. Well, and whoever's near the garlic and the garlic press, you're on. They're using the garlic <laughs> press. And we just go around the table. And I might walk over there if they're having a little hard time, but, um, you know, start with. But usually there's someone right next to them going, you don't own the garlic press? Just throw the garlic thing right in there. You don't even need to peel it. Someone right next to them is, you know, training them how to do it. And if they use it, they're much more likely to buy it. Yeah. Um, John, you probably didn't even sell the knife. I bet she used the knife and decided she wanted to buy it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we don't even have yeah, Well, that's one thing. The products really do sell themselves. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's our job to like get, get, you know, the customers getting their hands on those tools. And my shows are a little like controlled chaos. Um, but as, but we're all gathered around, we're cooking together, laughing and, um, and yeah, they're, they're trying things out. So yeah. Um, any, like I said, any, anything else that, that you want to be part of your culture and you're not quite sure how to make it part of your culture? Um, what's on the life of me? Trying to book those shows at the shows? Okay, booking shows at the shows. That's yeah. great. Okay, so you know it, that's what you want, mm -hmm. then you're going to teach it. So you're going to talk to your host um, and you're going to let them know that they get a half price item from every party that's booked from theirs. And, you know, you can let them know that, you know, probably two thirds of the people that they invite aren't going to be able to walk through the door that night, but many of them might want to have parties of their own. So you let them know, Hey, if anybody really seems disappointed about missing the party, you just say to them, Oh my gosh, you know, have a party of your own to get free stuff on a night that works better for you. Do you want me to have my pamper chef consultant contact you about that? And I tell them if they say yes, don't wait to the party. That's a good idea. Yeah. Send me their name and that again. In my calendar, my catalog, my calendar right away. So we can get those parties booked even before the show starts. Oh, now I'm getting a little message saying my internet connection is unstable. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you're breaking up on me. Okay. It, now it says it's stable again. Are you guys? Yeah, she is breaking up. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Are you guys hearing me at all? Any better? Yeah, now. Now you can. Now you can. Okay. So at the party, you want to plant? No. I don't know. Uh, probably my kids are on the internet too much. Let me let me try switching. Is that any better? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. I switched servers. I think my kids are live streaming stuff. Okay. So booking parties at parties. So you want to say at your show, like things like when you schedule your party tonight. Sonia is going to get a half price item of her choice at your party. Not when you book a show from hers. When you pick your date tonight, when you schedule your party tonight, Sonia is going to get credit for that. Okay? So you plant seeds like that. Oh, my goodness. You're, you're showing off the large round stone with handles at your party because it's on special next month. Oh, my goodness. When you pick a date for April tonight and you schedule your party, you can get this stone at 60% off, and Sonia is going to get an item of her choice at 60% off. Sonia, I know we talked before the party. What did you say that you really, really wanted at 60% off if someone were to book a, a party from yours? What was the big ticket item you wanted to get? The, the rock rock? Okay, so first person who picks an, an April date, guess what? You're starting your party with an order for a rock rock because that's what she's getting as her half price item. That's good. Yeah. So talk to the host when you're setting up. Find out what, what big ticket items they want. If they don't give you big ticket items, plant the seed. Like, would you love a rock rock? Or how about a knife block set? Because I'll tell you, um, if you can throw out something like that, I'm telling you, people, someone's going to book to get it. All right? Yeah. And then they're not going to be like, oh, I can't pick a date tonight because they're going to be like, Sonia's buying a rock rock at someone's party. 
and it's going to be mine. <laughs> if she's getting a knife block set at half price, they're starting their party with a $230 order. You make sure to put that out there loud and clear. First person, the person who books the earliest date in April is starting their party with a $230 order for a knife block set. Oh, believe me, they're not leaving that night without a date. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, so that's how you're teaching it, and that's how you're living it. Then living it is at the full-service checkout. Um, Sonia, what are you hearing from people when they say, when they don't schedule it that night? What are they saying? I, I get a lot of, you know, I can't, I'm just not that tight. I just go to parties. That's a huge one. Oh, they just go to parties? They don't have parties? I say, oh my gosh, Sonia, you guys, you people like you who say that, you guys have the best parties. You know why? Because you never have them. And all of your friends owe you big time because you've been going to theirs forever. Nice. Oh my gosh, you could totally clean up. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to give it a shot? That's great. <laughs> so when someone isn't a flat out no, if, if someone doesn't want to have a party, I honor the no's. When someone says, nope. I mean, you know a firm no when you see it. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not going to try to turn a firm no into a yes. But a lot of my, um, a lot of the people that are in my calendar are people who um, are squishy. They're not yeses, but they're not noes. Mm -hmm. So, but but for people who say, "Oh, I'd love to have a party. I can't pick a date tonight," I go, "Oh, that's okay. You don't have to pick a date tonight. But did you know what month you wanted? They usually want the month I was talking up." You go, well, yeah, I really want that April special that Stoneware sounded great. And you said April's the other November because like Mother's Day and Father's Day and graduations and all that are right around the corner. So I, I, I want April. Oh, okay. So do you know what day of the week you like? Because I tend to do my parties on Thursdays and Fridays. Oh, well, I definitely want a Friday. Well, I just take out my calendar. I flip till Friday. So guess what? We've gone from I can't pick a date tonight there's 365 days in a year. Now we know we want a Friday in April and I pull out my calendar and I go, okay. So in April, I actually have um, either the 21st or the 28th. How often do you get paid? And if they say every other week, I do a happy dance because I say, which Friday is, is closest to your payday? And they go, oh yeah, let's go with the 21st. And I go, okay. <laughs> I actually just did that with my niece over the phone because she was going to book and then she wasn't sure. So and it worked. So ah, see, <laughs> yes, it does work. And I've agreed with them, but I baby stepped them along the way. Now the worst case scenario, they're going home to look at the 21st to the 28th. And then I say to them, um, can I text you tomorrow to find out for sure so that I can make sure to put the booking on Sonia's show so she gets credit for the booking because she wants to order that night block set at your party. Oh, yes, yes, you can text me about that. Okay. So, um, part of getting booking at shows is the belief. Okay. I believe everybody should have a party. I think it's kind of silly not to. I mean, our host gets so much stuff for free and half off. I mean, if you want product, my goodness, of course you should have a party. And I'm thinking you should have it with me because, man, I am so much fun. I mean, but that's where my belief is. <laughs> But, um, you know, you got to know it, you got to, you got to teach it and you got to live it. And sometimes the teaching we need to do is with ourselves. We yeah. need to teach ourselves. So those are affirmations. I am a fun consultant. I'm a fabulous consultant. I'm trustworthy. Of course they want to have me at their house. And you know what? Some of the things you might put in your affirmations is easy to schedule a party. They think it's going to be hard. Again, there's like okay. 365 days in a year. But if we just ask a few clarifying questions, usually a date bubbles up. Or, or it's now between this one and this one. And I don't think people at my parties feel pressured. I think they're like, oh, that was easy. You know, yeah. I think they thought they couldn't pick a date, but after I asked them a couple of clarifying questions, it wasn't nearly as hard as they thought. Yeah. Okay. I find when you approach things from a caring point of view. Right. When we focus, yeah. I'm sorry, now, now you're breaking from up. From a standing point of view, it takes the pressure away. Yes, I agree. And when we focus on the needs of our customers, 
and not our needs. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're focusing on them. They've, they've kind of indicated they want to have a party, but they feel like they can't pick a date right now. And what did I say? Oh, that's okay. You don't have to. But did you know what month you wanted? So if you focus on, on their needs and, what, and respect what they say, we can sort of baby step them through it. And even when, like when Sonia, if you were at Sonia's checkout and you said, um, oh, I can't have a party because I never have these things. If I said that to you, oh my gosh, people like you have great parties because you never have them. And when you do, all your friends owe you one. Oh my goodness, are you sure you don't want to reconsider? Would you feel pressured by that? If I said, are you sure you don't want to reconsider? But now, you, yeah, now you're free to say, well, oh, maybe I could, which some people do, or you could say, no, nope, no. Nope. And then I go, oh, okay. And then I say, I just didn't think it was gonna be a one night stand between you and me, but all right. <laughs> and then I just move on. And, um, but you're gonna find your voice. <laughs> Because again, that's that's the culture I've created too. Because part of the culture, part of the, one of the main things I wrote down is no pressure, right? Because I don't want to be one of those, uh, right? You know, one of those salespeople. But part of my culture is also to be fun and to be funny and make people smile and laugh. Because I don't think we do that enough in our, in our, in our society. So when I'm talking mm -hmm. to people, I feel like I'm professional, but I'm not super serious. Okay, so when I'm talking about how to have a party, I'm still fun. Okay, and it's interactive. I'm not tacking at them. I'm having a conversation with them. So anyway, to wrap it up for tonight, what I suggest you do, like I said, take a day or two and write down those words. Let that list evolve of what you want the culture to be. Okay, because the first step is know it and then figure out how you're going to teach it. How are you gonna teach it to yourself through affirmations? How are you gonna teach it to your, your hosts uh, through host coaching? How are you gonna teach it to your customers? Maybe through the posts if you're um, promoting your party on Facebook. And then live it. Live it by doing it. Okay? All right.